All right, everybody, welcome back to the Steel City Blitz Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. And this is supposed to be the off season, um, but as many of you know, the NFL really does not have an off season anymore. It's a 365 day a year entity. And uh, it has definitely been that way for the Steelers uh, since the the playoff loss in, in early January. We're now a little more than a month out since that. And uh, things are starting to take shape. And, and uh, we're now less than a, uh, a month from the new league year starting, which means the Steelers have to get camp compliant. And they got to have a lot of stuff uh, taken care of by then. So the, the next... Um, Several weeks are, are going to bring some very uh, up and down decisions and emotional ones, I'm sure, for Steelers Nation. And if you uh, uh, are on social media, you'll know exactly what I mean in the last 36, 48 hours. Um, as we dive into some of this cap stuff, I have, uh, as usual, Ben and Ian are with me and uh, two guys that know the cap very, very well. So um, I, I definitely trust what they say, and you should too. And um, first of all, gentlemen, welcome in. And um, Ben, are you uh, enjoying a uh, beverage this evening? Oh, a couple. I mean, what, what do you got on? Well, well, we I got know. a little Basil Hayden. We got about three fingers of that. Okay. And uh, I got a couple of beers. You know, all right. All right. Some, some nice, tasty Northwest ales. Northwest Ales, all right, yes, very good. Yes, okay. we're spoiled here. Well, hey, good for you guys. Yeah, uh, Ian, I have uh, Rebel Yell. Re- uh, Rebel Yell. Yes. Okay. Very good. I happen I, to uh, know for for a fact that Ian has good whiskey at his house, but he drinks this crap all the time. <laughs> Rebel Yell. <laughs> I, it's funny when I went into his house, I did notice there was this 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 kind of strange door with a lock on it. Yeah, and uh, it, it, that, it had something about kids stay away. That's that's uh, where yeah. he keeps the whiskey that he breaks out when people come over, and it's just out for looks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the snifter on the back uh, uh, behind the businessman's desk, right? It's I just guess. there for looks. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, you know what, guys? I went total blue collar tonight. I grabbed an icy light when I got back from uh, my, my son's basketball. <laughs> and you're game. making fun of me for drinking whiskey. I know, I yeah, know, I know. I've only got yeah. a few left uh, of that case my brother in law got for me, so I, I got to be careful with those those blue collar. Is, that, is that the mango? No, no. I I've still got some mangoes, but uh, that's really uh, the no, sorority this... chick beer. But oh, you know, whatever. But of course, now I have to get a hold of the um, uh, Yingling mango. The Ying Yingling mango. I've got to yeah. find it. Uh, I, I'm just. Uh, I got. We got to get a hold of Rizzo Sarge, and he, he's a big mango fan too. And we'll we'll get his two cents because I'm sure he's had it by now. But we uh, should have him on the podcast just to talk about beer. That would be great. Right. Jesus. The, 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 the the black and golden beer show or something like that. I don't know. Um. Anyway, yeah. You know. So Marquise Pouncey did not check with me last week. I was very disappointed. Um. You know, we did the podcast a week ago tonight. And then he and his brother, Mike, decided to retire the next day. And, and I, I sent him a very sternly worded letter saying, dude, why, why would you do that and not let us know the night before? But uh, he, he that probably day, laughed. I, I'm, sure he, I'm sure he did, as he usually does <laughs> if when he I read send, it at send all. him letters. <laughs> right, right. Um, so so Marquise does, does uh, retire after 11 seasons. And um, um, Ben, is he a Hall of Famer? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, he's had a disappointing last couple of years, but overall, you got to look at at somebody's entire body of work when you talk about whether or not they're a Hall of Famer. And for a lot of years, Marquise was the best center in the league. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, especially this year, I'd say he made the Pro Bowl on. On reputation more than on his play but you know uh, for a very 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 long time he was the standard by which centers are judged by and uh you know he he also upheld that standard of, of great center play that the the Steelers mm-hmm. have had for a long time as far as you know that the tradition at that position goes so I'm gonna say yeah he is um you know, it's it's pretty rare for an offensive lineman to go in first ballot, and I don't know that Marquise will either, but he might. He's got a decent shot. 
he, yeah. he made so many damn Pro Bowls and All Pro teams that he made he probably... nine Pro Bowls in ten years. The only one he didn't make was the year that uh, David DeCastro fell on his knee on the first drive of the, first season. Drive of the season. Well, you know, yeah. DeCastro was just getting him back for taking his knee out the year before. <laughs> That's right in Buffalo. <laughs> I think so, it was, no, I, I'm, but... I'm being facetious, guys. Yeah, Neither one of those yeah. guys did that on purpose. No, Sorry, no, I know. Bad joke. You know, no, and, the, the and, point is, I mean, nine nine Pro Bowls in ten years, two All Pros, and he was on the Hall of Fame's All Twenty Tens t- decade. Yes, he was. So, I mean, I, I think that's a, a pretty good, you know, pretty good triumvirate of reasons for why he makes the Hall of Fame eventually. I I agree, it's hard for linemen to make yeah. first ballot, but I think I think eventually he will get it. Well, if Kevin freaking Mawai can get in the Hall of Fame. Then it should be a damn shoe yeah, in that, for Marquis. That Pelzi. was okay. We're not. Uh, yeah, get back at no, that. no, no. We're not. I shouldn't have brought it up. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, and he had to. I, I'll never forget. It wasn't it his rookie season that that he got the real bad sprained ankle. Right. You know, as we got towards the Super Bowl. Yep. Yeah, it was yeah, he missed the Super Bowl. Yeah, um, and that that would have been his one his one chance, as it turned out, to play in it. And and uh, you know, I, and I remember guys like Dan Marino talking about uh, you know when he made the Super Bowl at such a young age, thinking you know I'm going to be able to do this a few times. It just goes to show you how damn hard it is to get to the Super Bowl. Um, and and just I guess illustrates how uh, phenomenal it is that Tom Brady's been to as many as he has, but um, he's, he's the last person I really want to talk about right now. So um, Ian, what, what does this do for the the Steelers? I mean, right now the only center they've got on the roster is JC uh, Hasenauer, uh, who, who was a, a basically a backup at the university of Alabama. Most of his career, the Steelers saw some things they liked. You know, he started a game, uh, a couple games this year, and and uh, I mean, w- what does this do going forward for for the Steelers? <laughs> Center becomes your top priority and top need in the I, off season. Whether I, it's, I don't know about that, but it's all right. up there. Whether, whether Ian, it's let me finish because I know you have a little bit different opinion here, Ben. What, whether yeah. it's free agency or the draft, I mean, you 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 have to address center at some point. Well, it's um, no big deal. You just shine, you sign a Sean Mahon and it's, you're set. <laughs> yeah. Come he, on. Guy, who, guy who winds up on his back more than at the end of every play, more than he oh, winds up. Turtle standing, Mayhem. So, yeah. I mean, he, that was terrible. I mean, if, and here's the thing, if you don't have a, 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 at least decent quality center you can't even run an offense because you get interior pressure on every play the quarterback can't step up into his throws i don't care who the quarterback is if it's ben if it's mason if it's lamar jackson who's mobile if it's patrick mahomes i mean you saw it in the super bowl if, if yep. the quarterback can't step up into his throws mm-hmm. then you know the whole thing falls apart the the passing game falls apart the run game falls apart because yeah. you know you have interior linemen basically right on top of you um you know as soon as you're handing the ball off think of it if you don't have a good center, think of it like you're playing against Aaron Donald every week, except you're not playing against Aaron Donald every week. You're playing against like regular guys, but that's what it looks like if you don't have a good center. Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree with it. Now, Ben, I, I, I think you lean a little bit more towards offensive tackle, but you're what, right. Why? What's the reasoning here? Because <laughs> I look at it left tackle specifically. And yeah. That is an empty position right now, like completely empty. There's no depth. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the guy they 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 were counting on to be the guy there next year is Chooks. He did not exactly overwhelm this year. He was pretty underwhelming, especially as a run blocker, mm-hmm. and not great as a pass blocker. Now it could just be that you know he's better on the left side and that he'll be fine, but he wasn't overly impressive, to say the least. Al is a shell of his once former efficient self. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't expect him to come back. He's already in decline. You know, he's 32. He's done. Uh, You need someone there to protect your quarterback from speed rushers. Or again, as as Ian just pointed out, it doesn't make any difference how good your quarterback is. Mm -hmm. If he's running for his life, he can't do anything. He can't help you. So I would say... You draft a tackle first, you draft a center, certainly, and you draft one high, and you also sign a center, and it's not going to be a great center. It's no. going to be it's gonna be a veteran like a, a Stefan Wisniewski 
class mm-hmm. guy who can be the veteran presence on the team and start maybe start some games early in the season. Uh, maybe start for the whole season if if the rookie yeah. can't can't go in there and win the game eventually, win the position, excuse me, eventually. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, basically, I think tackle is more important, but but center is is very important. Uh, and both positions are more important than running back, for fuck's sake. Not <laughs> Najee Harris. It isn't going to happen. <laughs> uh, Here, here's you, the point I was at last yeah. year. was like the only running back maybe in NFL history that could have run behind our line last year was Barry Sanders. Like that's how bad it was. There were just guys in the backfield all the time. Like you, you – doesn't matter who you have at running back. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't happening. I don't know. 96 Jerome Bettis might have done okay. Yeah. Give, given a good head start. He, he probably yeah. Give, given a, forward. give him three steps. And that guy was. Yes. A, a tank. Yeah. Um, three steps to get ahead of steam and good luck bringing him down. So, so are we looking at like, and, and here's a name for you. Are we looking at like a Fernando Velasco level type free agent signing here? Um, uh, and, that's and maybe my expectation. A yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, and a rookie, you know, both. Yes. I, I think you've mm-hmm. got to do both and, and you've got to draft a tackle and mm-hmm. you're still not going to, you know, you're still going to have a bit of a patchwork line, but you'll have enough there to make it work. You're not going to have tremendous depth, but it'll work. Is this, Ian, I'll ask you this first. Is this a situation where the Steelers, unlike many years where, I mean, we're, we're always told they look for, you know, highest rated guy on their board, best player available, blah, 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 you know, all these things. I mean, what happens if, let's just say that, that one of these cornerbacks should fall? And is sitting there at twenty four that that they got a really really good uh, uh, score on a good rating on on their board. I, I mean, you mean like if they, Patrick Sertan falls? Well, I'm not necessarily saying him because I don't see that happening. But but yeah, sure. Let's just say as an example, uh, him or or oh my god, what if Kyle Pitts fell to twenty four? I, I mean, you yeah. Him. I mean, you, you kind of take, take him, him. but you he's not to. gonna. Yes, he's a right. top ten talent. He's not. No, a, I, I totally agree. I'm just you know throwing it out there from a, yeah. a, a no. It's, a, it's what it's, if you, this this team has enough needs and enough shortage of depth that you take the best player available mm-hmm. regardless of your needs. I mean, I mean we yeah. not only you know one of the let's just talk about this. One of the common things that gets floated around Twitter every now and then is like. Oh my goodness! The Steelers have 170 million dollars oh, in 2023 sakes. cap space. Oh, for fuck's sake! Here we're, we go. We're 2020. Uh, yeah, but that's because they only the 20. Yeah, whatever. Because yeah. they only have because they only have 17 guys signed through that through right. 2022. So like, and it's it's all the positions they don't have signed, like quarterback and left tackle, <laughs> and and the the big contract for Watt. Those are the things people right. aren't taking into consideration. Right. Well, and and uh, not only that, but right. I mean, there's the Watt contract. Both Hayden and Nelson are entering the last year of their contract. Um, so yeah, if if one of the top cornerbacks, which was your example, Mark, is there, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. you take him because your top two corners are entering the last year of their deals, and that gives you some flexibility on what you decide to do with Joe Hayden and Stephen Nelson. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if. Yeah, if it's a if it's a tackle, you have needs there. If it's a center, you have needs there. If if it's a if it's a quarterback, if one of the top four quarterbacks is somehow available there at twenty four, yeah, you take them because you don't have one signed after this year. Um, so yes, kind of best tight end too. I mean, Eric Ebron's mm-hmm. only signed through this year, and right. we're sure as heck not going into twenty twenty two. Is Zach Gentry is the starting tight end? So why Zach, not? Because oh, he sucks. Christ. Um, <laughs> so, well, so, so my point yeah. is it, it, it doesn't matter we have enough needs in the long term, right? That whoever the best player is on the board, you take them. Yeah. And no, I mean, you, but, I, I still think, especially given the fact that the, the depth at, at tackle in this draft is as good as it is, mm-hmm. you can get a top tier tackle at that position by the same token. Yes. Ian is correct. If Aaron Rodgers falls to 24, you take him. Like yeah. he did for Green Bay. Exactly. Yeah. Right, number you, you take him every time because the, the value is too good 
You can't pass it up. So if Najee Harris is sitting there 24. <laughs> no. <laughs> so so really it's fair to say, though, that, that with all of the, the needs that we have, running back is not one that you grab. Are, are we saying that then? Not in the first I mean, round. The, right. I, I agree. I mean, running backs, yeah. even marquee running backs, you you keep them around for four or five years, run the wheels off of them, and you, then yeah. you let them leave. That's, that's yep. Yep. That's the league now. No, you, I, you I'm totally with you. You yeah. don't pay running backs big money. You don't make big investments in running backs. And looking at the big issues with the run game this year, it was the line. It wasn't the running backs. James Conner isn't that bad. He's mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. And and if he gets on a team with a decent line next year, pff, he's going to look a hell of a lot better. <laughs> and, we're, and, and Steelers yeah. fans are going to go, See, you shouldn't have let him leave, blah, blah. Fuck, whatever. No, you're right, you guys right. bitch about everything no matter what. But, I mean, bottom line, he's not that bad. When he's, when guys are getting hit in the backfield, they have no chance. They got yeah. no shot. Nope. Nope. Uh, you know, it, it's funny, Ian, you mentioned, you know, Barry Sanders, and I, I, I think back to – the Lions were in a playoff game one year at Green Bay, and I, I think the Packers held him to like minus four rushing that game. Um, and the one significant reason why was penetration. They he he could never get going, and that's kind of what we saw with the Steelers a lot this year. It wasn't to that degree at times, um, but when you're being stonewalled and you're being pushed backwards, your running backs don't have a damn chance. So. Um, I'm, I'm, I think this draft is just going to be really fascinating. Uh, so I'm excited to see where it goes and we've got like what, 70 days, but be that as it may, um, what we did here today, uh, I want to, I want to say about running backs yeah, um, yeah. that, that, you know, looking at where the league is going, you know, not only is it very rare that a running back actually starts all 16 games, um, yeah. you know, you're, you're basically, unless you've got, you know, a, a Derek Henry, who's just a monster. Yeah. Um, I don't think any of the top running backs last year actually started all 16 games. Um, additionally, if you look at, you know, the top 10 rushers from last season, um, you know, uh, not many of them were even first round picks. I mean, you've got, you know, and you've got James Robinson in Jacksonville, who was the NFL's sixth leading rusher last year, was yeah. an undrafted free agent. A bunch of guys picked in the second round, um, you know, bunch of guys in later rounds and and we've seen it here too that you can you can find later round picks and and plug them in and have them play running backs not one of those positions unless you have just an absolute you know generational talent at running back that's worth it in the first round it's usually not you can usually find comparable guys uh you know later on in the draft well, l- let me ask you guys this. My son and I were having this discussion. He he says to me uh, earlier, he said, Dad, you said, you know, it looks like the Panthers might might try to make a run at Watson. And I said, he's not going anywhere. And and then my son says to me, he says, it sounds like Carolina would even give up McCaffrey for that. Would you do that, Ben? Would you give up McCaffrey to get a hold of Watson? Uh, probably not, no. Okay. All right, Ian. No. Uh, oof. I mean, it, 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 the, Mike the Davis problem is well for them, but McCaffrey does so many things. He's not. He's not right. just a running back. He's yeah. he's their slot receiver too. I mean, he he is kind of the exception to the rule of running backs because he mm-hmm. does so much for their passing game. Yeah. And, and it's also because they they don't just want two players they want two players two firsts and two seconds mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's like okay yeah. you want two of our young ascending players plus you want two future picks in the first and second round i yeah. mean that that'd be like the steelers saying i'll tell you what let me ask you guys this both of you mm-hmm. would you trade tj watt and Minka fitzpatrick and two firsts and two seconds for deshaun watson no hell no no not even close. No. Hell no. And the reason they're asking for so much is they don't have any intention of trading him. No. And it, uh, as Mike Ditka and others have proven, 
it only takes one. And if somebody is crazy enough to bite on it, then then yeah. so be it. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're in any hurry. Yeah, you know, the the reason I asked about McCaffrey and and you guys, I think, nailed it because he is so much more than just a running back. Um, and and I think that's the point is that we we look at running backs today, we see them used for three, four, five years, and and they're shuttled along and um, make a beating, so, man. Yeah. Oh my God, big time, big time. Um, for sure. But anyway, we'll get back to the Steelers here. I just thought that was kind of fascinating. Um, you are listening to the Steel City Blitz Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. Whether it's uh, commercial, residential, multifamily, or condos, contact Deck Roofing today by visiting deckroofing.com. Um, salary cap. We got some news today that uh, it was going to go from the expected 175 to 180. and it, Laura, it's in, 180. Well, and, and that's what I was going to start with here. Uh, ben, I, I saw some NFL talking heads say uh, they, they use the term floor. And then I heard other people say, well, it's the, the you know, that's the cap. But explain exactly what in the hell they're talking about. The letter that went out today to, to – yeah. The NFL team said that the salary cap would be at least $180 million. It has not been finalized. Right. And they, they, they will continue working with the NFLPA to finalize that cap number and that they would advise teams at a later date. Um, and, you know, they're going to try and get it done as early as they can. But they're trying to do the whole TV contract thing, and the NFLPA is stalling because TV contracts haven't been finalized because mm-hmm. they don't know who's going to produce the Thursday night package that is probably going to end up being streamed by one mm-hmm. of the service providers, but somebody else has got to produce it. Uh, this year, that was CBS. I don't right. know that CBS wants to do it anymore. So, you know, it's got to be NBC or ESPN or ABC mm-hmm. or NBC. I, you know, one of them has got to step up and 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 be the producing partner because Amazon doesn't have their own coverage team <laughs> right. and cameras and whatnot, right? Yeah, yeah. You need all or, that I, stuff to show a football game. Yeah. yeah, just just giving you that example. Uh, Amazon and Twitter and you know whoever else might jump in to to want to do this. They don't have the production capability to be able to put together that kind of a broadcast. Mm -hmm. So the NFL lost $4 billion in revenues last Mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. It's a big chunk. That is a huge chunk. The NFL wanted to recognize that entire loss in 2021, the entire thing. They wanted to put it all behind them at once, or at least Mm -hmm. that's their, that was their bargaining position when they went in to talk to the NFL PA. The NFLPA wanted to take that over out over a period of time. They suggested a 10-year amortization. Um, the league and the NFLPA eventually came to a four-year agreement. So they're going to recognize those losses over four seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't mean to tell anybody that the NFL lost $4 billion in profits. Their revenues were down $4 billion. Their expenses were also down. So they didn't yeah. lose $4 billion in real dollars, but they lost $4 billion in revenues. Uh, unfortunately, the salary cap is based mm-hmm. upon total revenues. So um, future, future TV deals don't really impact what the 2020 run revenues will be. They already kind of know what that's going to be provided that they can have fans in the stands. Right. So they already have a a sense for what an unadjusted salary cap would be before those losses are recognized or whatever portion of, of that is recognized. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, they're, they're negotiating with the NFL PA on what that final number is going to be. But what everybody needs to bear in mind is whatever that number is, they're borrowing money from future salary caps right? to pump up the salary cap this year. So whatever additional monies the union realizes over 
and beyond what that unadjusted salary cap would be is less money that they're going to see later. And, you know, so as a result, we're probably going to feel this loss for more like eight years. Does that make sense? Well, is it fair to say that it's it's kind of like uh you you have uh you you've accrued a large debt uh you owe somebody and instead of them saying hey I need it now I'm going to let you pay it pay it off over a period of time is that fair to say as an ex- sort kind of kind of I mean I know there's um some, well, along the uh, lines of me saying to you yeah um I'm going to give you an 8 year contract mm-hmm. and I'm going to pay you a hundred dollars this year. Um, and I'm going to pay you two hundred dollars in the last year of the contract. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, but you would like more. Well, I'll tell you what. We can borrow twenty five dollars from year five, and we'll put it into year one, and we'll borrow another twenty five from year six, and we'll put it into year two. We'll, we'll borrow another twenty five from year three, and we'll put it into gotcha. year. Excuse me, year seven. We'll put it into year three, and so on and so forth. So whatever money is moved from future years into the cap this year is is less money it's more money recognized today realized right. today but it's it's less than you're going to um, you're going to earn in the future okay so at, at 180 um Ian does this really do much for the Steelers or is this just kind of like Eh, okay, it, it just takes a little salt out of the wound. I mean, it, what does it really do here? It helps, but it doesn't help a ton. Um, yeah. So we also have $5 million in carryover dollars from last year. So we were $5 million under the cap at the end of last season. So we were able to carry that, that cap space or that mm-hmm. money over to this year. So effectively, the Steelers' salary cap this year is – if if the actual cap comes in at 180 it would be 185 for us if it comes in at 185 it would be 190 for us you know somewhere around there okay. that being said we already have like close to 220 million dollars in commitments so that's why we need to make adjustments so right. at 180 we're still you know 30 million ish 35 million ish under the cap or over the cap sorry right. um the the cap is under by thirty five. You know what I mean. Um. So yeah, I mean, there's there's adjustments that have to be made. Uh. You know, some of those are going to come in the form of the retirements with Pouncey retiring. That saves a little bit. With um. You know, Vance McDonald retiring. That saves a little bit. But you know, point two. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's chipping away at it. But I mean, the the elephant in the room is Ben Roethlisberger's contract. You're yep. you're not going to get under the salary cap with any kind of room. Uh, to do anything and like we said they have what 19 free agents this year they need to sign so without touching ben's 19 million dollars in salary that he's due this year between his 15 million dollar roster bonus which is due in mid-march which is why there's some urgency to do something now and four million dollar base salary yeah um so and and don't forget too that you probably we have that five million in carryover, but you probably need about that much to sign your draft picks. And they also usually like to go into the year with somewhere between three and five million in cap space, just because when guys get hurt, then you have some room to sign guys off the street to add to your roster, things like that. So, I mean, effectively, they need to get eight to ten million under the cap just to be able to, you know, sign their draft picks and have space going into the season that they want to have um, not only, and, and more under that if they want to be able to sign any free agents. So well, they, they've um, got to be cap compliant by March 17th, no matter what. Yes. Right. right. Yep. Yes. You know, and, and Ben's bo- roster bonus isn't due for another five days. So his roster bonus isn't even the real deadline anymore. They have to have it done before the new league year starts or they cannot operate at all. That's, I mean, (laughs) okay, so I'm kind of speechless because uh, that really puts this whole thing into kind of hyperdrive. Um, And and so let's get into that because Kevin Colbert spoke yesterday and um, 
look, you know, Colbert is usually really, really good with his words and stuff and, and so on and so <laughs> forth. I thought he was, uh, actually. Uh, but uh, he he came off to me as a guy a little defeated um, yesterday. And and that's not to say that he and Omar Khan and, and the others won't get this all straightened around and figured out. But look, as Ian just said, this all comes back to, to number seven. Um and and what ultimately is going to happen there. And I, I think some fans are under this idea that, well, if he just retires, then we get all that money back. Or if he's cut, well, then we get all that cap space. Uh, no, it doesn't work quite that way. Um, ben, what did, what did you take from what Colbert was saying? And, and I guess right now, you know, as we sit here on February 18th, uh, is is Ben Roethlisberger back next year? Which comments are you referring to? I mean, Colbert said a lot. He talked for 30 he, minutes. He did. I, I guess I'm just referring to some of the comments he made that, in in my opinion, and again, it's just my opinion, uh, he, he really was putting it on Ben. Um, you know, things... Kind of. I mean, basically I mean, what he said is, we need to make sure yeah. this situation worked for us and for Ben. And we've told him that we'd have to make an adjustment to that contract. But right. he, he was not direct about what that adjustment would be. Do, do, you, do you guys think, though, that, that the only two things really on the table anymore now seem to be retirement or just ridiculous pay cut? Yes. Ian? Yeah. Yeah, I because I, I don't, I mean, and you guys know this better than I do, but restructuring uh, extension just doesn't seem in the cards to me at all. Again, as I, as I referenced last week, yeah. the Steelers have never done voidable years on a contract, ever. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they shouldn't. I'm just saying they don't. So everybody that keeps suggesting the voidable years, the voidable years, they can just do the voidable years. They don't do that. They just, I mean, that's like, that would be trailblazing behavior under the contract Mm -hmm. standard for the Steelers. They just don't do it. And they don't extend guys past the years they think they can actually play. I'm not saying it's the right way to do it. I'm saying it's what they do. So I'm not expecting them to do either one of those things. On top of that, if they extend Ben, you know, basically it means paying him $19 million in cash this year, mm-hmm. which I don't know if they've got, um, you know, they're, they're making it sound like they don't have the cash reserves to be able to do that. I, I think they may be exaggerating the situation a little bit, but, um, yeah. you know, uh, I, I don't think they're, they're looking to extend him. And I don't think that they want to do voidable years to try and and smooth that number out you know to make it more palatable from a cap standpoint mm-hmm. i mean you could you could add a couple of voidable years and do a fake extension with fake years you know and then right. tell ben you're not going to play past this season and you could you could reduce his cap hit by you know quite a bit but they just don't do business that way no they just they, don't they don't, um, and and so Ian, uh, what what do you think? Is he is he back, or are they ready to transition away from him? I feel like with every passing day, my confidence in him coming back decreases. I, um, I was I was pretty confident last week, but now you know, looking mm-hmm. at the broader situation, you've got two of his best friends on the team in Marquise Pouncey and Vance McDonald, both retiring. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Kevin Colbert's comments. Um, you know, and, and then also, e- even if he does come back, you know, Ben has said he'd like to have Juju back, and yeah. you know, he's pretty close with James Conner, who's probably going to be gone. It's pretty close with Phil Inueva, who's definitely going to be gone. So, I, I mean. He, different offensive coordinator even though you know he, Matt Canada was there last year it's still going to mm-hmm. be a somewhat different system so you know is it does Ben want to adapt to all these new teammates and coaches in his last year is he willing to do the Peyton Manning thing or is he um, you know gonna hang it up and 
I, I know he said he wants to play, but right. does he? <laughs> Ben's always been a guy who wants to do things on his terms, right? Does Very he, much. Does he want to play with all these new guys in a new offensive system, um, or you know, does he want to play with the same group of guys he had this year, which is infeasible given the cap and everything else? Mm-hmm. So okay. um, it's not feasible. You're exactly right. And I think that was behind some of Colbert's comments about, you know, it's it's not necessarily just about Ben, but the team around him, too. And, Absolutely. and I read into that, that that's kind of part of Ben's decision. Also, not only part of the team's decision, it wasn't just that, you know, the, the team was saying, hey, if we bring back Ben, we're not going to be able to sign anyone else. But I mean, it's certainly if, if Ben plays on his current salary number, they can't bring back anyone else or really do anything it really hamstrings them um so yeah it's it's really going to come down to and it's really that 15 million dollar roster bonus that they have to make a decision on um you know and i mean maybe the easiest thing to do from a contract perspective is to defer that roster bonus until you know the end of training camp like if say you know if he's on the roster at the end of camp uh, or something like that to kind of mm-hmm. push the decision back they, but they, but they ben, can't. ben is ben is absolutely our our ben is absolutely right that they have to get under the cap by the start of the right. league year on March 17th and they're not going to get under the cap in any way unless they do something with Roethlisberger's contract so basically they have to make a decision in the next month one way or the yeah. other yeah Did, didn't they do that exactly. with was it was that Boswell they did that with mm mm-hmm. mhm yeah, yeah, they did, but it yeah. was a lot less money. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, D- apples know. and oranges. Definitely. So yeah, it was it was completely different, and they actually had the cap space to carry that mm-hmm. roster bonus. It's also true all the way through the summer, where this year they just don't have that option at all. Um, I think what they were telling, I think what Colbert was saying is, look, mm-hmm. we've told Ben that Juju's not coming back, and we already know. That, you know, Vance, who he was close with, and Pouncey, yep. who he was close with, they're not coming back. Mm-hmm. And Ben now knows it's going to be a completely different offense, not just schematically, but from a personnel standpoint. And we're giving him an opportunity to consider whether or not he wants to come back. And frankly, I also think they're negotiating. I, and I know that sounds shitty, especially mm-hmm. for a guy mm-hmm. who's played for them for 17 seasons, but. I think they're they're overplaying the we're poor <laughs> angle angle a little bit here because it's not like the Steelers are hurting for cash. Okay, yes, right, they are right. cap poor. They 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 have cap poverty this year, no question. But could they pay Ben the nineteen million dollars and and make it work? Yeah, they could. They just don't want to. Bottom line. Is it at all possible that there's an element that they really, really, really want to see what Mason Rudolph can do with a full offseason? I hope not. Well, no, (laughs) I'm with you. None of us are are in the Mason Rudolph camp, okay? Um, But, you know, he's in the last year of his contract, um, I, is there is there something there where they're like, you know, we need to see what he can do. We liked the little bit of improvement we saw in his one start. I, I mean, because the improvement they... was this. Eh, I mean, I thought he Colbert, improved a little. Colbert alluded to that in his press conference. Yeah, we were encouraged by his improvement in the game. What improvement? I, he still I... was captain check down. He yes. still missed open reads. He still I... did all the dumb shit. He did before. I I, just, uh, I, I don't. I think he was a little better than that. That's just he was. me. He and was I'm not. I'm not saying better. that's not, not saying, saying he's, he's winning a the Super Bowl starter. He's not right. a respectable starter. He's not. Well, okay. So so let me maybe offer this vantage point. Um, you're Matt Canada. You interviewed for the Miami Dolphins job, and and we'll never know. Nobody will ever know whether he was going to be offered that job or not. We know he he had kind of been offered the Steelers job before, and then we went through this whole having to interview uh, minority coaches and a lot of these other things. But um, if you're Matt Canada, who do you want to be your starting quarterback? You want an honest answer? Yeah. You want like Trey Lance or Justin Fields <laughs> or someone like that, but you're not going to get him. 
No, and, and, and that's what I, I keep hearing from people that, well, you know, I, I think, you know, Ben doesn't want to run this offense, so maybe it's time to go to, to Mason. It's like, are you kidding me? What the hell is Mason going to do in, no. in Matt Canada's offense? Mason is less mobile than Ben is. Yeah. And that's yeah. saying something. I, I don't know about that, but he's not he's well, not mobile. Let's put it that way. And you know who's the no. least mobile quarterback? Haskins. Oh, my Haskins. God. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. The thing that's really weird about Mason Rudolph not being – and I don't think he's got terrible straight line speed, but his lateral quickness is awful. Yeah. He's not a good athlete as quarterbacks go. Do you know that Mason Rudolph's parents were both collegiate athletes? Both. I, I had heard that. Yeah. He, he's, this, um, this is a guy who should have quicks and yeah. just doesn't. I don't he's, get it. He's cl- he's heavy legged. I That was one of the very first things I noticed when I watched his tape three years ago. He, he just his legs are very very heavy. He doesn't look like a guy that's laid on his feet. Yeah, ever. no, not at all. In the ever. pocket, he lacks presence and he moves yeah. like a sloth. Yeah, I, 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 so that that's the reason I bring those things up is because that's just where I feel this thing is at when I hear people say, "Well, maybe they just want Ben to retire so they can see what they've got in, in Rudolph." And it's like, I, I think you know what you've got. I, I mean, what what more do we need? to really see um I, yeah he threw a very nice deep ball that game he played i mean but but <laughs> he still doesn't throw the ball outside the numbers very well and as you pointed out he checks the ball down a ton um yeah, no his but I, you know his outside passes take way too long to get there because he throws these long looping passes with a lot of air under them that give dbs a chance, chance to make to up yeah. um to make up the gap they have between the receiver and themselves. And it allows for turnovers. Mm-hmm. And that, that was mm-hmm. the thing we saw in 2019 was, was DBs turning around, tracking the ball and either batting it down or picking him off. And that, that to me is, is one of the biggest issues with Mason on top of the fact that I don't believe that he can read defenses, but you know, mm-hmm. <sighs> Anyway, well, I'm going to get and, all worked up here. Yeah. Uh, long story short, I'm not a, a Mason believer. I think you guys got that point already. You know they got. Yeah, well, I, I yeah, and I don't I don't think Ian is either. Um, no, I'm not. And I'll tell you another thing, Steeler fans. Um, if you're real hot to trot on Kyle Trask coming out of Florida, uh, he's, he's Mason. He's Mason. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, he's he's, now he moves a little better. He's a big guy. He moves a little better, but his, his arm strength is is almost the same. Um, he cannot get the ball out to the numbers, and his deep throws are all arm. He, he doesn't get his lower body into his throws at all. So I, I I would just let that ship sail if I were you folks, because I keep hearing Ed Bouchette talk about, oh, I think the Steelers like Kyle Trask. Yeah, well, they might like him in the fifth round, but I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I think they like him at tight end. end. <laughs> <laughs> he, he could. He's like two thirty. I know. He I know he could. Up a I know. Bit. He absolutely well, hey, could play tight end. <laughs> Zach Gentry was a quarterback, and he made the transition quite well. Quite well. Um, <laughs> the clipboard carrying practice squad player. Yes, he has made the transition very well. You're right. It sounds like we're probably never going to have Zach Gentry on the show. Um, but... Maybe you should invite him. He can defend himself, <laughs> you know? I mean, equal air time. That's true. Facing that's your true. accusers. There's something to be said for that. Right. No, that's true. There is. There is. Uh, yeah. Um, one, one other thing, too. Uh, Juju, and, and I, you know, I, I just think it's important for fans to accept reality. Um, and I know some of them have. It's just that they like to play as if they haven't on social media, and I and I I love them, um, but it, it's it's just not going to happen. You, you're just yeah no. Juju you just, said yesterday he wants to be paid what he's worth. Yeah, and for the previous what ten days he was doing this whole well the grass isn't always greener and you know even though that other team may be paying you more it may not be a better situation mm-hmm. and blah 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 and that gave Steelers fans hope and I get it. I yeah, love Juju I too. too, and I I want Juju to, to be successful. I think he's worked his ass off. Um, yeah. The whole social media building my brand thing that doesn't really bother me that much because no. it really doesn't impact him on the field. 
at all. I don't um, think so. I wasn't a fan of him dancing on team logos, but he stopped. Right. Um, you know, and, and so I, I just think overall, the guy's a hell of a player. He's an ascending young talent. He's a guy mm-hmm. you want to keep, but given the circumstances, they just can't. And but, yeah. they have depth at that position. And they're yeah. going to have to move on and draft somebody else, which they're exceptionally good at. So, well, you know, uh, if, yeah. If I'm Ian, them, I don't doubt my ability to to pick another receiver who can contribute this oh, year. No, I, yeah, in the I, middle I, rounds, can't argue it. Can't argue it. Um, Ian, I, I think you mentioned this today in our our chat. Um, talking a little bit about the fact that a lot of times when Steelers leave to go to other places, they it doesn't always turn out very well. That is true. Yes. Um, and that was actually something that Juju said that kind of caught my eye with his whole, you know, the grass isn't always greener thing. Yeah, he said, yeah. you know, guys have left the Steelers and haven't done as well. I mean, you look around, uh, Mike Wallace for one, um, mm-hmm. which I think if you actually – watched Mike Wallace play in depth you kind of saw the signs that were there that he was all straight line speed he had no yep. lateral quickness at all him yep. trying to run like a 10 yard out route was like watching a <laughs> boat turn it was just like like he took round <laughs> corners he took so many That's steps to make a cut he yeah, did. like it he was did. it was insane, and, and like juxtapose that to Antonio Brown, that yes. was like foot in the ground, boom! Like Antonio Brown was so sharp and exploded out of his cuts in such a way that you know when when Mike Wallace tried to turn, it was just like it, it was like that scene in Austin Powers where he's trying to turn around the the little cart, but he's stuck between the two walls. It was <laughs> yeah. just. <laughs> it, it, yeah. was, it was awful um you know and uh, nate washington did okay when he went to to tennessee but he wasn't mm-hmm. a, never as good as he was with pittsburgh no. um emmanuel sanders was better when he had peyton manning throwing him the ball but after that i mean even this year with drew Brees, he wasn't all that good um you know so so yeah i think i think juju has a point i mean levy on bell flamed out yeah. in, in new york um that that Juju has a point here that you know he's he's seen guys go other places for more money to try and get their payday and it didn't quite work. I mean, look, the the Le'Veon Bell situation is a perfect example. The Steelers offered him more money than what he got with the Jets, and he turned it down to go somewhere else and took less money yeah. to be less successful than he was in Pittsburgh. So, I mean, I, I think it's interesting that Juju's considering that, but. I, we've talked about it before. I mean, he would have to take some kind of massive pay cut below what he's worth. And, you know, for a kid who grew up sleeping on the floor of a garage in his house, like I can't, I can't blame him for, you know, no. wanting to make no. what is life changing money. I mean, and, and you know. I, I completely agree with e- every word Ian just said. Yeah. And I, and I also think that, that he deserves it. Yeah. And the Steelers aren't in a position to pay him. No, and and I, I think it's really, and this isn't a word we hear a lot with him because people just don't want to use it, but I think it's very mature on his part that he understands the history. He understands there have been guys that have left, you know, relatively in their prime and it hasn't gone well. You know, a lot of young players don't really have any regard for, for what happened before them because they're so wrapped up in themselves. So I, I give him credit for recognizing that. Um, that you know, at least I think so. I think it's worthy of it. But, um, gentlemen, we're just about to wind things down here. Uh, do either of you have a parting shot this evening? Hmm. <laughs> parting, parting I, went, shot? I, I went first last time, so I'll let Ben go first this time. Yeah, Wait, that's what? fair. That's fair. I, par- I'm going shot? first. Yes. yes uh, I, have... I hadn't really thought about this. Uh, okay. Let me see. We talked about the cap. We talked about mm-hmm. Juju. Mm-hmm. Talked about uh, Colbert. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Colbert. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Um, oh, there's a a Steelers Facebook rumor <laughs> that Mike Tomlin. <laughs> you had me at Facebook. Yeah, I know you had me at Steelers Facebook. It's gonna be funny. You're right. It is. Yeah. It's funny. It's fucking stupid. Uh, there's a Steelers Facebook rumor that Mike Tomlin is in the works 
A Steelers Facebook insider says, oh, I have it from inside sources. Inside sources. That Mike Tomlin is going to get a three-year, $30 million extension okay. this offseason. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm just going to tell you guys, that's bullshit. <laughs> and we're going to move on. Yes, he'll get a two-year extension this year. It will not be anything close to $10 million a year. Uh, right, and that's fairly standard operating procedure for the Steelers to uh, to give that with, uh, what, two years left, right? Correct. They typically yeah. do a two-year yeah. extension on top of that. The last time, they only gave Tomlin a one-year extension, remember? Yes. Yes, I yeah. do. Yeah, and, and this year, they, they're going to do a two-year extension. Okay. Um, so, you know, he's going to be around yeah. for a little bit. And <laughs> coaching contracts are fully guaranteed. Yeah. And yeah, it's not going to be for 10 million a year though. And it's not going to be three years. And that's really all I know beyond that. I mean, okay. getting that much information was difficult, but yeah, that's bullshit. Uh, and uh, Ian, any uh, parting shots from you this fine evening? I just as a, a word of of warning and of caution, you uh-huh. know, especially with what the salary cap goes, don't believe anything or get your hopes up too high until it's official. Same with you yeah. know signing guys in free agency. Same with w- w- whatever happens, you know, over the next month or so. Don't don't put too much stock in it until it comes from an official source. Yeah, I think official that's good sources. advice. There, there's there's a lot of official sources out there in social media, and uh, you know that's up to the listener to decide and the reader to decide which are the actual official ones. But um, my own parting shot, real quick, uh, goes back to the TV deals. You know, it looks like Direct TV is going to get out of the Sunday ticket stuff. Maybe, and maybe, yeah. I, I don't want to say for sure, but um, I'm all for it. And I, I would absolutely love for it to, to be spread across or to go to somebody that's a, a lot more accessible. Um, and you don't have to buy a dish and other packages just to get it and all that stuff. But I I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. So um, in any case, so well, guys, that's uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, just direct TV is no longer going to do dishes and residential applications, residential installations. Oh. Um, it's streaming or nothing. One and two, you know, basically it's two streaming services that are competing for the direct ticket deal right now. It's ESPN mm-hmm. Plus and Direct TV. And Direct TV is kind of drawing the line in the sand, I guess, as far as how much they're willing to pay. Yeah. So the NFL is waiting to see if ESPN will step up and pay even more. Yeah. My understanding is ESPN Plus has, has been very successful, been a big hit. And uh, I, I hope that continues if, if they should. Disney dollars, baby. <laughs> oh, got to love Disney dollars. Well, hey, new Cruella DeVille movie coming out. Marvel, yeah. Avengers, oh, all that, that shit. Awesome. awesome. That is, they they, they no, can't go no. wrong. We, we do not need any more gritty reboots of Disney villains. That is the worst. <laughs> like, come, uh, come up with that. something original. I'm so excited. I want to see it. Are you kidding me? I mean, Emma Stone is Cruella DeVille. I, you know, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I love it. Yeah, well, before we get too far off the rails. Anyway, you've been listening to the Steel City Blitz Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. And uh, hang in there, Steelers fans. The off season is going to be full of twists and turns over the next four or five weeks. And uh, we'll do our best to explain things to you. So uh, for Ben and for Ian, this is Steel Dad signing off. And hey, go Steelers. Ravens suck.